Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white equipment combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, capable of making infinite mana as early as turn 3. And it's pretty simple, curve Fervent Champion into Forge Master, into a turn 3 Lotus Ring. Fervent Champion can equip Lotus Ring for free, so it now has the ability to tap, sacrifice this creature to add 3 mana of any one color, make 3 red mana, get back Fervent Champion thanks to the Forge Master's ability, saying whenever another non-token creature we control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, we get to return it to its owner's hand. So get back Champion, replay it with a floating mana, equip it once again, rinse and repeat, and now we have infinite mana of all colors, not only red mana, since we can eventually start making different colors as well. So that's the plan. How do we actually win with infinite mana? Well, there's a few ways to do it. One of them includes a Mask of Immolation. We can sacrifice the equipped creature to deal one damage to any target. So now instead of sacrificing our Fervent Champion to Lotus Ring's ability, we sacrifice it to Mask of Immolation instead. The Forge Master will still help get the Fervent Champion back into our hand, so we can once again rinse and repeat and deal one damage over and over. And then we could also win the game if instead of Fervent Champion we have a Fireblade Charger that we can equip with Lotus Ring. Although the caveat being that we also need a way to discount the equip cost on Lotus Ring, since Fireblade Charger doesn't have that free equip ability such as Fervent Champion. But the upside is that when Fireblade Charger dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So now if we equip it with Lotus Ring and we sacrifice it to the Ring's ability, we get to deal 4 damage. So that makes for its own win condition. And then now we only need to discount the equip cost, either using the Blade Hold War Whip, which is an equipment with 4 Mirrodin, so it comes attached to a 2 2 Rebel token, giving a double strike. But we just care about the equipment part of it, which will discount equip abilities by 1. Or we could maybe level up Fighter Class, which starts out by searching up an equipment, so it can help find Lotus Ring. And then if we get it to level 2, we'll discount equip abilities by 2 mana. So that can also set up our Fire Blade Charger to combo off. So yeah, that's kind of our game plan in a nutshell. Now I've tried a lot of different builds of this deck, including builds that included Colossus Hammer, plus ways to equip it for free as kind of a backup plan. But then I ended up winning most games with a Hammer combo as opposed to the Lotus Ring combo. So I've had to redesign the deck a couple of times and ended up with this pretty bizarre build featuring four copies of Queen Kayla of all cards. So you know I had to dig pretty deep to make the deck work. This 3 mana 2-3 doesn't do anything the turn we play it. Then we need to untap, pay 4 mana, tap it, and then uh, discard all the cards in our hand to draw that many. So very slow ability in a format as fast as Explore. But then in addition to discarding and drawing, we can also choose an artifact or creature with mana value 1 we discard it, one with mana value 2, and potentially another with mana value 3, and return those cards from the graveyard back to the battlefield. So that means we can potentially put Fervent Champion, Forge Master and Lotus Ring into play from our graveyard, and then we'll also have drawn a fresh hand. So in addition to now being able to make infinite mana, we'll likely have a way to close out the game, at least in theory. So Queen Kayla mostly here to help find the Forge Master, since this is the least replaceable combo piece, and if we don't draw it, then uh, of course we're not going to be able to set up the combo. And then we also have four copies of Militia Bugler as another way to kind of dig towards those missing creatures as we get to take a look at the top four cards when it enters and reveal a creature with power two or less and put it in hand. So that can also find Forge Master, Champion, Charger, or even Queen Kayla or additional copies of Bugler and even two copies of Kellen, which has an adventure which for two mana can find any equipment and put it in hand. So that's another way to find Lotus Ring in addition to the Fighter class. So we essentially have 10 copies of Lotus Ring if you count all the tutors as well. So Lotus Ring is usually pretty easy to find. The creatures we have some redundancy, but again Forge Master is the key piece that we need to combo off and uh, ideally we have lots of ways to try and find it, which is why I ended up with Bugler and Queen Kayla, in addition to Thrilling Discovery, which can uh, discard two cards to draw three and gain two life in the process. So that can also dig deeper towards the Forge Master if we don't have it already. And then we already mentioned Mask of Immolation as an additional win condition that we can search up with either uh, Kellen or the Fighter class as well once we have infinite mana. So we've got that redundancy as well. 
And then the mana base is pretty simple, lots of red white dual lands, and then some channel lands for added interaction. So yeah, I'll be trying this in the play queue, since the uh, competitive ladder just did not quite work for this deck. A little bit too janky, so be warned, and definitely don't go spending your wild cards on Lotus Ring. But for now, hopefully you'll enjoy the games, so let's get to it. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got two of our three combo pieces, just missing the ring. And then with Thrilling Discovery, we might be able to find it. So turn one champion. Well, let's see what we're up against. Black, green, and Gorehound, so some graveyard combo deck. Okay, play Forge Master. And get in for one again. We'll see if our opponent's packing removal or not. It will affect our decision what to discard with Thrilling Discovery. Aha, uh -huh, Priest, so it is a sacrifice deck. Could play Bugler first, just to have an extra body to sacrifice. Even though it doesn't find the ring, it could find Kellen, which in turn finds the ring. And then we can wait a turn on Discovery. Alright, there's Kellen. So... Can't quite combo off next turn, but the turn after we might be able to. I guess if we top deck the ring, we might be able to get there. Put on now with Tyvar. So this could also be a Bolas Citadel deck, for all we know, but yeah, Insidious Roots makes more sense. They can immediately activate Fiend Artisan if they'd like, but they don't have any mana unless they activate Priest first. Goodbye, Bugler. And they still have two mana they can use. For Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Alright, so that actually shuts down our combo since we have to go through the graveyard. So we need to catch the opponents with a tapped cauldron somehow, or have multiple combo pieces we can sacrifice in one turn. So that makes things a little tricky. Now we can finish off Tyvar at least. And then probably still Thrilling Discovery, discarding a land and Forge Master. And then we can uh, use Kellen to get the ring if we don't uh, draw it first. Ah, got a backup Forge Master. Could also go for a Fireblade Charger to have something else to sack to the Priest next turn, but. That's fine if we can uh, keep it for later, since now with War Whip giving Charger a discount, it can also maybe combo off with the ring. So we'll see where this goes. But yeah, if they don't disrupt me in any way and tap their cauldron in their turn for some reason, we technically can combo next turn. Bones got a Stitcher Supplier to fill the graveyard some more. And a Scrap Heap Scrounger. So we'll likely see another Priest activation. And interestingly, I could sacrifice Forge Master, keep Champion, and then if I top deck an untapped land, I would still be able to play Forge Master, play Ring, equip Champion for free, and combo off. But of course, again, there's the Cauldron that will intervene. But uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. And keeping both Champion and Charger to maybe sacrifice to the ring if they use Cauldron could also be useful. So their opponent's got two cards left. Cauldron at the ready. And did not draw the lanes, but now we can go a Lotus Ring, equip Champion, attack, and still play a Fireblade Charger. Okay. Opponent can grow their scrap heap. And another Tyvar. Can uh, minus, maybe get back a Stitcher Supplier. Could also untap the Priest to activate it a second time. 
Or just get another priest out of the graveyard if they have one. Alright, for now, sacrifice Charger. That way if they minus Tyvar, they no longer get the benefit from the passive ability. And a Deathrite Shaman. Don't see that one very often in uh, Explorer, but it is illegal. Just not quite as powerful without fetch lands. But yeah, now with Tyvar, they can immediately activate Deathrite, which offers another way to kind of disrupt our combo that relies on the graveyard somewhat. But we can make sure to attack with Champion first, I guess. Deathrite exiles a land. Makes a mana. And they will just activate Priest a second time. Alright, fair enough. Can make some mana here, but it's gonna go to waste. Opponent with another Priest. And they're gonna keep activating it. And finally get back Scrap Heap. Okay. Well, we do have another Fireblade we can equip with Lotus Ring to pressure Tyvar. And now even a Fervent Champion. Which do we prefer? Probably the Charger, actually. Since if they take it out with Priest, it can take out something when it dies. And again, because of Cauldron, we weren't able to combo right now by going Forge Master plus Champion. Could also sacrifice Charger right now to take out the Priest. Opponents at 10, so they're also pretty close to dead. But uh, I think we just pass. Cauldron now has the Priest ability, so the Scrap Heap can also pretend to be a Priest. So all these recursive threats are pretty annoying with the Cauldron in play. Gets back Scrap Heap, which would let them activate Priest. I guess so it goes. And another Priest. So no shortage of uh, Sacrifice Fodder. So in response... Take out the Scrap Heap, I guess. Lots of triggers are happening. At least now they main phased used the cauldron, so the coast might finally be clear to combo. We're down to six. Supplier's fine. Now I guess what we don't have is a way to make use of infinite mana. Now that we lost a charger, that cannot be used to combo. So I still need to top deck something else. Queen Kayla. Well, I mean, I guess we'll start by assembling the combo and then we can dump our hand into play and take it from there. So we'll have to repeat this a few times to make enough mana. We can also make white mana. As long as we have some red floating. Opponents at 10, but they do have a Trump blocker, so it's not like I can attack for lethal with the uh, Fervent Champion equipped with Double Strike. But we may as well get the War Whip in play. Queen Kayla. Play Kellen. So Kellen also boosts up our creatures if it's equipped, but uh, probably still better off equipping the champion itself. So 
So replay this. Move the war whip. And attack. Opponent's gonna trump, mill a few more cards. Could move the war whip onto a different creature in case that matters, since we'll have to deal with the cauldron again. So I think I do end up moving the war whip somewhere else. Alright, so where do we want Lotus Ring? Where do we want War Whip? If I put the ring on Kellen, that can be a pretty significant threat since it already has Double Strike, and that will pump up the rest of our team. And then War Whip I can put on the uh, token, perhaps. Alright, that's probably good enough for now. Opponent with a Prowler. So they can use Cauldron to grant Scrap Heap the uh, Priest's ability. But we have plenty of creatures we can sacrifice now. And with Forge Master in play we can get back whatever creature that dies as long as it's equipped. So they seem pretty dead. Cauldron targets Crowner, can activate have two mana, one card left, so don't see a way out for them. And then what to sacrifice? Good sack Kellen since we'll get it back with a Forge Master. Sure, we'll still have lethal regardless. And then now Kellen could tutor up our other equipment using the adventure. And that does it. Wow, what a game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, not a very exciting hand, admittedly. But if Queen Kayla survives, we get to dig pretty deep. Bugler can maybe find Forge Master. And uh, could keep Charger in hand, could play it. I think I'll keep it in hand, reason being we can maybe put it in play for free with Queen Kayla. And then by having more cards in hand, there's more I can discard. Facing a red aggro, so it's gonna be a tough matchup if our opponent presents a slick shot here. It's gonna be a robber instead. Punishes me for holding Charger in hand. And opponent found Fighter Class. If they're playing Ember Cleave, they can maybe find that. I think we still go for Queen Kayla, even though it might get struck by lightning. And then next turn. I wouldn't be able to win on the spot, even if we top deck or two drop, but it should set us up nicely. And then I don't think I risk blocking etching. Alright, light up the stage, finds Ember Cleave, so they actually had it. And now Fighter Class to search it up, so they have another copy. Alright, so next turn they can cast it, but we top decked Forge Master. So if I had, instead of Fireblade Charger, a uh, Fervent Champion, we actually have infinite mana at the ready. Still pretty nice for us. So can't equip anything for free, but next turn we even have a backup call. We might be able to get there, assuming we survive this attack. So let's say the Amber Cleave, this goes up to 4, so that hits for 8, 9, 10, go to 1, so I'm not dead. If we take 5, they could also have double Lightning Strike, but they didn't cast it on Queen Kayla, so I think we are fine to take it, and then next turn we should just win the game. Uh, 
All right. Jumping with the charger is reasonable since we have a backup. Even though it does get exiled by the etching. So there's a few ways we could do this, but I think the most straightforward one is make infinite mana with Fervent Champion. And then use that infinite mana to equip Charger repeatedly. And then when the Charger dies, it deals damage on the way out. So that will win us the game. Otherwise we would have to activate Queen Kayla to find some other win condition. So Charger has four power when we sacrifice it, when it's equipped with a ring. So we need to go through that loop five times. All right, so we have more than enough mana. Overdid it a little bit. So now I can start equipping Fireblade Charger and go through the loop a few times to win the game. Alright, our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing our Forge Master. Bugler can maybe find it, but then we have essentially three redundant equipment. Although one can eventually get our win condition. Yeah, I think this is a little too clunky. Still missing Forge Master, although this time we've got Queen Kayla to help out. Give it a shot. And then, what do we prefer, Kellen or Fighter Class? Probably prefer Fighter Class, since that can maybe help discount our equip abilities to combo with the uh, Fireblade Charger. Turn 1 Forest, Lenor Elves. Alright, so the good news is, don't expect much removal. Bad news, opponents on the play with a turn 1 Lenor Elves. And they seem to be an Elf deck. Could be mono green, could be black green. Splashing black for a Shaman of the pack. So I do still need to get a Lotus Ring. Then the plan's going to be Queen Kayla. Turn 4 activates. Could also Discovery to try and find Forge Master to eventually put in play when we activate. Although, yeah, it's a close call. Possible we draw into the Forge Master by activating. And then we can kind of prioritize putting in the uh, Lotus Ring over Bugler to find Forge Master. Could also get Mask of Immolation, which is a two drop we can put in play alongside Bugler. Maybe that works out better. And then I don't need to worry about having a win condition. And then we've got a lot of ways to find Lotus Ring. So our opponent's holding a collected company which can represent a lot of damage. Just gotta play Queen Kayla and hope for the best. So there's the company. And what do they hit? They're having to make a decision, which is usually not a good sign. Alright, Elite and Fierce Empath. Fierce Empath cannot get Crater of Behemoth in Explorer, but uh, there's plenty of other curve toppers they could get. And Ancient Imperiosaur. Alright, haven't seen that one in the elf decks before, but makes a lot of sense. So that's likely gonna present lethal next turn. And I don't think we're quite there yet to combo off. 2020 Trample. So yeah, we seem pretty dead. So activate Queen Kayla, put in Mask and Bugler. And that's pretty much it. They might even be holding another collected company. I did find the Forge Master eventually. So next turn, use Kellen to get Lotus Ring. I guess it's still a little slow to actually win the game next turn, but we would have had a chance. But yeah, the Imperiosaur, pretty cool combo alongside Fierce Empath when you don't have the mana for your author win conditions. All right, GG's.
on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, sure, we can try this. Missing Forge Master, but between Thrilling Discovery and Queen Kayla, we'll get to see a lot of cards. And I'll actually keep Charger in hand, so we can maybe put it in play with Queen Kayla. And kind of drip feeding the opponent our combo pieces and getting them removed one by one is usually counterproductive. Whereas putting them all in play at once can be a lot more effective. So I guess now that we drew the ring, there's no need for fighter class. So keep Queen Kayla and Lotus Ring, I think. And we drew a Forge Master, so yeah, we've got most of the pieces we need. Spiteful Hex Mage. And now Fervent Champion. So I play Lotus Ring. Next turn we have Infinite Mana. Although I don't have kind of a mana sink to make use of the infinite mana yet. Or I can play Queen Kayla, and then with an untapped land I could put all three combo pieces in play while drawing additional cards as well. Of course it does require an untapped land, so it's not a guarantee. But uh, it seems fun. It would be impressive to just put all three in play. Synthesizer, that's fine. So kind of a red-black sacrifice deck it seems. Bone Crusher, not enough to take out Queen Kayla, so just goes face. Alright, and we found the land. Wow. Are we actually gonna get there? Turn 4, activate Queen Kayla of all cards. And uh, yeah, at the very least we'll be able to use infinite mana to cast Thrilling Discovery, which has a chance of finding a win condition. So we'll start by making red. And then eventually we'll need some white mana. And then Discovery discarding a land and Queen Kayla. And then hope to find something useful. Fighter class will do it. Alright. Sweet. Fighter class gets our... Mask of Immolation, and that can sacrifice Fervent Champion repeatedly to win the game, although we will need to make a bunch of mana beforehand. But I'll show the opponent just so they know what's going to happen. Well, hopefully this game showcases why I'm a fan of Queen Kayla in this archetype. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Fervent Champion, Kellen to find Lotus Ring. And then we just need to find the Forge Master, but uh, Discovery can help there. So, a Keeper, but can easily be picked apart by some well-timed interaction. So we'll see what our opponent's working with. Hallowed Fountain into a portable hole. That's too bad. So we'll get Lotus Ring. And then next turn we can either cast it or maybe play the whip first. Opponent foretells. Maybe a Doom Scar here. I'll play the whip, can apply a bit of pressure, but we don't care if the token dies, since we mostly care about the cost reduction to equipment. Okay, get in for four. And then we could play a Lotus Ring, potentially get it countered, versus Discovery, which at least if they counter it, I don't have to discard any cards yet. So maybe we'll start there. Now I'm not going to want to play the Forge Master until we're ready to actually combo off with it, since we're suspecting a Doom Scar. So I'm going to have to keep hitting my land drops as well. So I'm gonna just pass without playing Fervent Champion. Alright, opponent had to behold the multiverse instead. So next turn we have a couple options. Queen Kayla is one of them. Could also play Bugler to try and find the Forge Master, but I'll start by attacking once again. Alright, Wandering Emperor is fine. So our opponent's tapped out for now. You started this fight, but I'm going to 
And then, yeah, Queen Kayla can maybe put in Lotus Ring and Champion next turn. And then if we draw Forge Master, I could maybe cast it as well. So I do want to hit my land drop for the turn. And then activating the Queen is also a way to get past opposing counter spells. I have got new moves to teach you. Supreme Verdict will wipe the board. Okay, so Champion plus Lotus Ring can clean up the Wandering Emperor for now. And then Bugler can be a follow-up. Don't want to sack the champion to equip War Whip, that would be a little counterproductive. Back to wandering. Okay, we get to untap. And then we'll start by attacking with Fervent Champion. And then I can play a land into Bugler so we can pay for no more lies. If that's what they're holding. Right, opponent with an Iganjo on the champion. Can't really make use of the mana here in the middle of combat, but that works. And then play Bugler after playing a land. Find either Forge Master or Queen Kayla. Yeah, I'll grab a Forge Master. And then for now I can equip Lotus Ring. Gets a discount from the whip. So with the whip in play, I could potentially combo off if we find Fireblade Charger as well. Points good at Teferi, can maybe bounce the Bugler, but that would leave them vulnerable to any of my one mana creatures to combo off next turn. Bugler instead. So if Bugler finds another Fervent Champion, that would be good enough, right? Because we can play Bugler, play Fervent Champion, play Forge Master. And then combo off from there. So, step one. And sadly found a Fireblade Charger. It's still good. Although, it won't win me the game right now. But I can play it, equip the ring. Take care of Teferi. And then... Hope that they don't mess with my permanence too much. Okay, Pilgrim, that doesn't mess up our combo, so yeah, we should still have it next turn. Draws a card, maybe another portable hole can save them. It does not. Alright, so now we easily get there. Sank Charger. Only costs two mana to equip, so it pays for itself to replay here. Beating blue white control as well here may not have been the optimal version, but they still cast some good interaction. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got Forge Master, class to get Lotus Ring. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got most of the pieces we need. And then start with Fighter class if we suspect our opponent's keeping up removal. All right, opponent on the Red Black Vampire deck, actually one of the more competitive decks out there. So if we can, by some miracle, win this matchup, I'll be impressed but not keeping my hopes up. Opponent could have a Sorin and Cheeda Vein Ripper into play here. And that combo is a little easier to pull off than what we're trying to accomplish. For now, a Blood Tithe Harvester. Also means they have a removal spell in play to remove the Forge Master. But uh, maybe Queen Kayla can still activate next turn. Putting in, I guess, Forge Master and Lotus Ring right now. They can easily enable Revolt for a Fatal Push, if that's what they have. Duress can take the ring, then we'll just put a War Whip in play instead. Blood Token discards a land, 
So Harvester no longer capable of taking out the Forge Master, but they did have Fatal Push. Well, I'm just going to replay Queen Kayla, I think. Now, interestingly, I drew the Mask, so if we want to put in Forge Master, I end up discarding the Mask. And then um, we may not have that win condition in the deck anymore. Put in Minusing Sorin to put in Vein Ripper. They could have decided to take out Queen Kayla. Alright, they also had a Thought Seize. So, probably no realistic way of uh, comboing next turn. And now Sorin can start chucking vampires at my creatures to take them out. So it's going to be even harder to combo. Kellen conveniently finds Lotus Ring. But if I play Call now, it's going to be exposed to Sorin taking it out. So that doesn't work. So I think it's just activate Queen Kayla, put in Forge Master and War Whip. And then hope by some miracle that we're not dead next turn and we get to maybe figure out a way to win. We did draw the Lotus Ring, at least. So, yeah, potentially next turn we could get there. But I imagine Soren deals with the Forge Master. Nope, just pumping up the Vein Ripper. So they're maybe not respecting the combo here as much as they should. And get to untap. So... I'm still missing an actual win condition to go with potentially infinite mana, but uh, by activating Queen Kayla, I'll uh, be able to put in Lotus Ring, and then hopefully we'll find whatever we're missing. I'll also likely need a land, unless we draw Fervent Champion as the payoff. Uh, Fervent Champion that makes infinite mana, and then I guess we'll need some other piece to actually win the game. But I think I keep the land in hand, so we draw four as opposed to only three. Alright, found Fireblade Charger, so put in Lotus Ring. Yeah, Charger almost does it, since we still need two mana to equip the ring onto it. And then we would have been uh, good to go. But uh, unfortunately, we're going to be a little bit short. If Fireblade Charger was Fervent Champion instead, then now we have infinite mana, we can cast Discovery and likely find a way out. But now the Vein Ripper is just going to end the game for us, so... That's too bad. Alright, our opponent had a fatal push anyway, so explains why they maybe didn't uh, take out the Forge Master. But uh, yeah, that's the Red Black Vampires deck for you. Just a little bit too powerful and disruptive for the combo to survive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we're missing Forge Master. Otherwise, we have everything we need. But of course, Forge Master is the hardest piece to find. I think I still try it. At the very least, we can uh, suit up our Fervent Champion with a Lotus Ring on turn 3. Still want to play Champion on 1, so we can potentially combo on 3 if we get lucky. It's going to be a Fighter class for now. So, could get a replacement ring in case they counter the first one, or we can get Mask as another way to combo if we do generate infinite mana. The War Whip is also reasonable since it goes with the Fireblade Charger in case Fervent Champion dies. So we had a few options there. Because as long as we can discount the equip cost on Lotus Ring by one, we can also go infinite with Forge Master and Fireblade Charger. Opponent taps out for Sprite Dragon. And we draw land. So yeah, we'll go for Lotus Ring while the opponent's tapped out, so we can have a 4-4 Fervent Champion, which is not the easiest to remove with a burn spell. It looks like our opponent might be on a Dragon deck here if they're playing the uh, Temple. So in that case, they might have the burn spell Invasion of Tarkir, but also the... Uh, Dragonfire, which could deal more than 3 damage. Opponent probably has a few dragons to reveal. Dragon Engine and Stinger Back Terror. Yeah, that will do it here, sadly. 
Now the good news is I don't expect the opponent to have a ton of instant speed removal. Although I guess they are also playing Sprite Dragon. But maybe just because it's a two mana dragon. So we're just looking for Forge Master. Can use Thrilling Discovery. Or we can go War Whip plus Charger and then next turn Discovery. And still have the mana to cast Forge Master and maybe combo. Although I guess we also need the ring to be equipped in the first place. So maybe I go Charger, equip with Lotus Ring to have a 4-4. And then well, let's say I do draw Forge Master. I can play it, sack Charger, get it back. And then play War Whip and we're off to the races. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And we get to hit for 4 once again. I can also sack the Charger just to deal 4 to an opposing creature. But I think I keep it in play if possible. Looks like they have another removal spell here. Dragon's Fire, yep, revealing a 7-powered creature. Alright, at least I get to take out the Sprite Dragon. But that will slow us down, as now drawing Forge Master is not sufficient. Militia Bugler can maybe find it. If we find a random creature that I don't care about, I can maybe discard it to a Thrilling Discovery. Or I could Thrilling Discovery first, discarding a land plus whip, since Fighter Class can kind of fill the role of the mana discount on whip, so it's not essential. And then I'm pretty likely to find a land to still cast Militia Bugler. Alright, found Forge Master in spades. So we'll run one out there. And then Fervent Champion or Fireblade Charger is what we're looking for. A bitter Union. Pretty good synergy with Dragon Engine to maybe unearth it later, but nope, we're just discarding a land. They're looking through the graveyard, trying to piece together the combo perhaps. And a Dragon Engine, so they are finally tapped out. Although can't really take advantage. Unless Bugler hits Fervent Champion, then we have infinite mana and we can win. Alright, that's worth a shot. And that's a swing and a miss. Eh, that's too bad. So now I'm still basically looking for the same set of cards, but my hand doesn't really dig more towards them. And Goldspan's bad news. Can transform the invasion, and once they transform the invasion, they can uh, decimate my board pretty easily. So Bugler fine to trade for Dragon Engine. So this might be my last turn to maybe top deck something. Well, that's a Fervent Champion, although our opponent does still have two mana represented by the treasure token. But uh, yeah, it's my last chance to go for it, so we may as well. Could be the Bitter Union holding priority. If they take out Coal, we have a backup, so that wouldn't be a disaster. But for now, we're going off. And then with infinite mana, can cast Fighter Class, search up our uh, mask, and that will deal infinite damage eventually. Okay, so opponent doesn't seem to have any relevant interaction. So we seem to be in the clear. We can show them the Fighter Class and the Immolating Mask here. So they know what we're working with. Mask of Immolation. Can play it. And then we can equip the Fervent Champion for free. Sag the Fervent Champion, dealing one damage this time. Repeat a few times, but we might need to go through the ring combo to make more mana in between. And our opponent sees what's happening and concedes. Awesome, on to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw, and sure, we can keep. Just missing Lotus Ring to try and combo off. Facing turn one forest, there's Lotus Ring. So could we actually present a turn three combo here? That would be the dream. And mono green decks are not known for having a lot of removal. We'll follow Haven, so it is a devotion strategy. Now, we are still missing a way to spend infinite mana to actually win the game. Although playing Militia Bugler can maybe find the uh, Fireblade Charger, which would do it. Boseju, not actually an answer to Lotus Ring since it's indestructible, so wouldn't have made a difference. And now Kiora can untap, make three mana. Okay, so infinite mana on turn three. We're outspacing the mono green devotion deck in mana production, which uh, is not something that happens every day. So I'm just going to make a bunch of mana, starting with reds, then we can make white, and then hope that Bugler can find Fireblade Charger, which will then win the game with infinite mana. If not, we can just dump out our entire hand and hope to top deck. Alright, so now we can maybe make some white mana, since I'm curious to see what we can find off the top. That's a swing and a miss. Try again. Alright, Fireblade Charger, that's game. Turn 3, not bad. So I'll first make a bunch more mana, just to be safe. But Charger will do it. Opponent's at 18, so I need to go through the combo five times. So we should be just about there. All right. Well, we finally got there. The turn three combo. So if we could choose our opening hand every time, this may not be a bad deck, but sadly we do rely on a 4-off copy of the Forge Master, so if we don't actually get it in time, the uh, deck is going to be a little slow. And it's also not too difficult to interact, since a simple removal spell on a 2-2 creature can disrupt the combo. But yeah, when it works, it's pretty nice to see. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand just doesn't do anything. This is better. So, probably keeping a Lotus Ring. We can discover a discarding on turn two, so it probably doesn't matter too much what I bought them. But in case they have a discard spell for Lotus Ring, I guess I want to keep Fighter Class and then War Whip the least important, since Fighter Class can also kind of fill its role. I'm not going to play Charger on one, since I might need it as discard fodder for Thrilling Discovery. Could also discard a land, actually, since we're somewhat likely to find another. Could also discard the ring and use Fighter Class to get another one, since we're up against a discard deck, potentially. So the more uh, permanents I can keep, the better. Close call. Yeah, I'll discard Charger, keep Fighter Class, I think. Okay, found a Forge Master, so we have pretty much all the pieces we need to win the game. Just need enough mana and time to deploy them. So starting with Lotus Ring makes sense, since it's less susceptible to a removal spell. And then Fighter Class I need to level up before we can equip Charger. Opponent makes a treasure. And Thrilling Discovery, the draw. 
Don't think we'll get a chance to activate Queen Kayla in this matchup, so I can also discard it with a Discovery if I'd like to maybe hit some more land drops. Yeah, maybe we'll do that, because Fighter Class can also get a win condition, so if we top deck Fervent Champion, we can maybe combo with Forge Master and then win with Fighter Class. And then I'll just hit a land drop for the turn. Westgate Regents on turn 4, not bad. And there's Fervent Champion, so that should win the game now. Play Forge Master, play Champion, equip for free. Make infinite mana. And then Fighter Class can get our Mask of Immolation. And slowly but surely ping the opponent to death. So I can play the Fighter Class just to kind of show our intentions. To maybe save the opponent some time. Mask of Immolation, that's her win condition. Although it's going to take me a while to actually go through the loop. So it's not the most arena-friendly combo. Since we first need to make a bunch of mana. And then I need to equip the champion over and over, only dealing one damage for each iteration of the loop. I did at some point try the cudgels. That's an equipment that you can activate to increase a creature's power. And the more you activate it, the more it increases the creature's power. But... Uh, that one doesn't work if the opponent has a blocker, like right now with the Westgate Regents. We could force them to chum block, but then next turn they could maybe interact with a combo. Whereas Mask of Immolation is a guaranteed win once we have all the pieces in play. Just requires a lot more clicking. So I'm just making a bunch of mana. Maybe I should show them a loop with Mask of Immolation, just to showcase what we're capable of doing with infinite mana. And hopefully they'll get the message, but they're always allowed to uh, stick around, of course. Alright, our opponent is gonna scoop it up onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's pretty mediocre, although at least with double discovery we can change the contents of our hand pretty quickly. So I'll try it. Broker's Hideout. Is your opponent maybe replicating the landfall deck from Standard in Explorer? Who knows? Could be convinced to keep Champion in hand, since we can maybe eventually put it in for free with Queen Kayla. And in the meantime, I'm going to have to discard something to the Discovery, so maybe one of them can go. Opponent with a Grazer, so there's a ramp deck. Well, Discovery, and then I think I still keep another Discovery in hand. And then discard maybe Charger plus Fervent Champion, even though Charger could be a win condition once we make infinite mana. If we have infinite mana, we can also cast Discovery, which digs pretty deep to maybe find another win condition. And now we've got the mask, so that's all set. Cobra, pretty good with the uh, fetch lands. Could remove it next turn by playing mask. Or we can play Queen Kayla and then try and set up a powerful turn four. But I probably have to uh, take care of the Cobra before it makes too much more mana. Aha, uh -huh. the Pugilist. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm still in favor of removing Cobra. And then play Tapped Foundry. And then next turn we can look into either Bugler or Queen Kayla. So take three. And a druid class is next. So our opponent's just trying to get as many lands in play as possible. Okay, Queen Kayla might be the play now. And then next turn we can put Champion and Bugler in play for free. And dig towards the Forge Master. Still need to find Lotus Ring as well. Now a Shia. Pretty good with any landfall synergies. 
So now the Pugilist also gets the plus five, plus five. Okay, so we're under significant pressure all of a sudden. Found the Forge Master. So if I had the ring, we could just put everything in play and combo off. Uh, sadly, we do not. That being said, I'm still in favor of a Queen Kayla activation and then put in one, two, and three drop. And then ideally find another creature to chump with so we can chump Ashaya. And I guess Champion could also maybe be equipped by Mask for free to chump. I guess we can still do that regardless. All right, fine, I'll uh, activate then. Yeah, I forgot we had a Mask in play. That means that I'll have a uh, Fervent Champion that can chump essentially for free. And we found replacements. So we should be good to go next turn. And I'll play another Fervent Champion, I guess. And then Fireblade Charger is how we deal infinite damage next turn with a Lotus Ring we found. So, yeah, as long as nothing unexpected happens, we should be okay. Scute Swarm's not bad. But yeah, we can just jump the non-trampling creature, Bugler in front of Pugilist to soak up some damage if needed. Although for now we could just take 8, fall to 1, and still get there next turn. Just have to make sure I don't tap my Battlefield Forge for colored mana. And then, uh, yeah, we already have the Mask of Immolation. So I don't even need the Fireblade Charger necessarily. Although it should speed up the combo a little bit since getting there with Mask takes quite a while. So first we want to make some mana. And then the fastest win is with Fireblade Charger. Points at 26, so we'll need to go through the loop a few additional times. But uh, let's say we have seven floating mana. That could already suffice. Sacrifice to deal four. Can also take out all of the opponent's creatures, but May as well just win the game. So we go down one mana for each iteration of the loop. Just the uh, casting cost of Fireblade Charger. Opponent's at 14, falls to 10. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to make a tiny bit more mana here with the uh, Fervent Champion. But our opponent's taking around for the fun. So let's just make sure I don't mess this up. Fervent Champion nuts us two mana for each iteration of the loop. All right, and now we can go back to Fireblade Charger. We can also make white mana if needed, so we can keep casting more spells in case we were still missing a win condition somehow. All right, GG's. And that should do it. Close one here against the blue-green landfall. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing Forge Master. Although I have both Bugler and Discovery to try and find it. Yeah, we can give this a try. And then, since we don't have Queen Kayla, maybe it's fine to play Charger on one. Which could save us one mana in the future. Although sometimes it's fine to hold Charger 
until we're ready to combo. Alright, Discovery, ditching Kellen and Bugler since I want to keep the ring. Find another ring. So that's a little redundant, but we might find another discard outlet. Opponent Teamer colors. And War Whip will play nicely with the Fireblade Charger. So for now, hit for one. And then... Could go Lotus Ring, could go Bugler. Ring has the advantage of maybe enabling Charger to sacrifice to take out something important if needed. Bugler just helps up the pressure. And then I guess there's even the War Whip. Yeah, I guess I don't hate War Whip either. Since I will need to get it in play to actually win with Fireblade Charger if we draw the Forge Master. And then it's a 2-2 double strike, so... Likely to get the opponent's attention if they have removal. And I'm happy to get a Harness Lightning out of the way. Which otherwise could have taken out a key combo piece. Is their opponent an energy deck? So they're gonna try and combo with Aetherworks Marvel. Which does require 6 energy to win the game, or rather to activate. But then they can hit an Ulamog to take over. So the clock is ticking. Queen Kayla, we can maybe activate next turn. Putting in, although just a one Lotus Ring or Bugler. So... In that case, I may be better off just playing the Lotus Ring or the Bugler. No, I think I actually still like Queen Kayla. Because while we only get to put one of these in play, I'll still get to discard and draw a bunch to try and find the Forge Master. And then if we see that we drew another ring, I can maybe keep Bugler over ring to put back in play. And if they have another removal spell, then they're also not uh, taking out a key piece. It's going to be a tapped land, so they can maybe sack Puzzle Knots and then next turn Marvel to combo or Virtuoso. That's fine. And there's a Forge Master. So I have all the pieces I need, but I still need to untap to be able to combo off since we need the extra mana. But uh, Queen Kayla can put both the Ring and Forge Master in play. And then technically I could still draw untapped land plus Fervent Champion to just combo off right now. I uh, didn't get the uh, Fervent Champion. So I'm one mana short of comboing right now, since it's two mana to equip Lotus Ring on Fireblade Charger. So with that said, I guess we'll just play a tap land and pass. And then next turn, hope uh, they don't get to cast a free Ulamog. Up to eight energy. There's the Marvel. All right, spin to win. What's it going to be? Another Puzzle Knot. Alright, so they didn't immediately hit the jackpot. And now it's going to take them another turn to charge up their energy. And in the meantime, we should be able to combo off. So, step one. Equip Lotus Ring onto Fireblade Charger. Sacrifice Charger. And I guess I'll take out the Virtuoso in case that's holding priority. Alright, so hopefully now our opponent's out of actions and things will go smoothly. Alright, seems to be the case. And yeah, this is infinite damage. Thanks to War Whip, we can uh, pay for the Charger's equip costs and that will do it. Alright, so we got to see this red-white equipment combo in action. And again, I'll reiterate, we played this in the play queue, so don't expect it to be a very competitive deck. And uh, certainly don't spend your wild cards on Lotus Ring unless you absolutely are positive that you'll enjoy it. But uh, yeah, as far as the combo goes, it's cute, but unless we get another reliable way of tutoring up the Forge Master, I don't think it will be very competitive. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.